whatever it is, during a calendar month. So a Brent Ford is, we call it Brent paper or 30 day Brent. It has a whole bunch of different names, but it's a forward contract. So an April Brent forward, April 30 day Brent, April Brent paper, whatever you want to call it, a variety of names. If you buy it, you're buying a fixed price contract. It's going to be standardized. It's OTC over the counter. So it's not traded on exchange. And you will end up getting delivery of a cargo of physical oil during the month of your contract. And if you buy April, you'll end up getting a cargo during the month of April. At some point, someone's going to ring your phone up and say, hello, uh, 5, 7, April. You're getting a cargo of Echo Fisk. And that means you now have a physical cargo of Echo Fisk that's loading 5, 7, April. You have a North Sea cargo with dates. Your forward contract has now become a dated Brent contract. We, call, we still call it dated Brent, even though you've been nominated Echo Fisk. In all likelihood, you're going to be nominated 40s, but whatever. Um, you're going to end up with one of these one of these grades. All right. Um, 30 days prior. So if they want to nominate you a cargo for loading on 5, 7 April, they have to call you 30 calendar days before. It has to be before 5 o'clock in the afternoon, London time. And if they don't call you before five o'clock in the afternoon, they cannot nominate those dates to you. And you will either get a call the next day or you might never get a call and you just, your contract uh, expires at a, at a settlement price. So if they call you at four o'clock <coughs> and you don't want the cargo, there's a variety of reasons, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> why you might not want the cargo. One of them might be is you, you're not a refiner. You don't feel like loading a physical cargo and trading it. The most likely reason is that the cargo that they're nominating to you, why are they nominating it to you? Well, if they're nominating a cargo, there's, there's one of two reasons. One, they're a producer. Producers do use these forward contracts to sell off their production. So if, if a producer is looking into the forward market and he says, oh, the market for April is pretty good on this forward contract for Brent. I think I'll sell one. And he's now locked in his price for his production during that month. And when does he get his production in the month? He's not sure yet. The, the company that runs the scheduling, BP or Shell or, or Statoil, whoever, will inform him of when his cargo is coming at. And, when he, and they have to tell him at least 30 days before. And they tell him 30 days before, he takes his forward contract calls up the guy he sold it to and says, you can have a cargo of 40s loading or Echo Fisk or Troll or Osiper, whatever is loading five, seven. Now, if it's an equity producer, he just wants to sell his oil out and he might not care. He's locked in that price and he's happy. If this is a trader or somebody else, or even a, another producer who's just wants to play a bit more in the market, try and make some more money, what interests them is not just selling this cargo out, not just making delivery, it's making money. So a, an oil trader who bought a forward contract is now going to look at the forward contract that he bought at a fixed price versus the value of that same physical contract, physical oil in the market. So 30 days before delivery, dates are assigned. He's going to look at that cargo and go, hmm, if I take this cargo as a physical cargo, I paid $50 for it. But because of the way the market is structured or because of changes in quality evaluations in the market, differences in, in sulfur premiums or what have you, this cargo is actually worth 51. Now, he might have resold that car, that forward position to somebody at $50 and 25 cents. So if he just took that forward position, he got his phone call at four o'clock. If he just called the next guy that he sold the position to for April, he could just pass it on to him and lock in 25 cents. But if he holds on to it, he can take it as a physical cargo and make a dollar profit. So he would do that. So generally, if somebody passes, 
a cargo onto you, it's because they're a producer or because the cargo loses money if it becomes a physical cargo. So by selling it on as a forward contract, they make more or lose less than if it, they actually had to take physical delivery. So typically if someone passes you a cargo, they don't want it and it probably means if you're not a refinery, you don't want it either. Even if you are a refinery, you probably don't want it. You could probably buy a real a dated, another dated cargo cheaper on similar or, or similar dates, exactly the same or, or similar dates. So you want to pass it on. If he calls you at four o'clock, you have your speed dial ready. So you, you bought a forward for April and you also sold a forward for April because this is how people trade these things, which essentially balances you out. You have no more price risk, right? If you bought a fixed price forward and sold a fixed price forward, the only difference you have is whatever price you bought and sold them for. So you get a phone call at four o'clock. You look at the market and you decide, well, this paper contract is worth more than the physical contract that it represents. So I don't really want to take the physical oil. I'll just pass this on in the chain. So you speed dial and you hit the next guy and you say five, seven, April, Echo Fisk or forties and you hang up the phone. Okay. He's in the same position. If you're passing it on to him, the odds are pretty good that it's a crappy cargo. Nobody wants it. So what does he do? He calls the next guy that he sold to and these chains can go on company to company with sometimes the same company appearing two or three times in a chain, they can go on for 30, 30 links. Ultimately we approach five o'clock and that's the cutoff time. If you haven't been nominated the cargo by five o'clock, 30 days before delivery, that's it. You don't have to take it. So if someone can't call you 29 or 28 days before say, Hey, remember that forward deal we did? Well, here's a cargo. You're like, wait a second, that's in 20 days. You're not allowed to do that. So five o'clock's the limit. If somebody calls you at 459, you're allowed under the rules to let your phone ring twice. It rings twice. You pick it up. They give you the dates. Um, and then you have, if you don't want the cargo, you need to call somebody else. Now it's 459 and 58 seconds. You hit speed dial and you're listening. It rings once. It rings twice. It is now five o'clock and one second. Someone on the other end picks up the phone and goes, hello, and you go, hi, how you doing? Good, you want to get a beer? Yeah. And they go, oh, you got stuffed with a cargo? Yeah. You were trying to pass it on to me, but you ran out of time? Yeah. Okay, I'll meet you for a beer later. It's too late. One second after the hour, you can no longer pass the, that nomination date on. You're stuck with a cargo. And that's called being five o'clock or clocked, and it happens. Anyway, that's one of the fun and games of, of trading North Sea crude oil. But anyway, that's what a Brent forward is. Brent forward is a very standardized contract at a fixed price for delivery of a cargo of oil during a calendar month at a fixed price, fixed price, fixed price. Standardized, which makes it easy to pass on. So when we negotiate or when we buy and sell a Brent forward, we don't really need to negotiate the contract. We just call up the guy and say, April, April Brent, $57 and 10 cents and the guy says, okay, done. And that's it. And there are no other terms or conditions. It's all standardized, which makes it a quasi derivative. But remember, it's a very chunky physical in the end. You can get stuck with having to make or take delivery.